Now, believe me, I totally get it when it comes to the WWE product that there's so much to criticize Vince McMahon for. There absolutely is. And he merits it. He deserves it. He could look on the one hand and say, oh, look at the record profits and look how they're going about them. Look at the time that we're in. But in general, look at, especially from a domestic standpoint, loss of interest in product, loss in viewership, all of these things. You can clearly tell, like you don't even need to be told. And we, we all follow shit on the internet. We all look at the dirt sheets and the wrestling websites, blah, 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 blah. We don't need to do that though, to understand that when it comes to the main roster product in particular, uh, it's all for an audience of one. And that's all Vince cares about, is if it pleases him, then who gives a shit if the fans like it or not? If it doesn't please him, no matter how much the fans might like it, he doesn't care, he's not going to do it. So, incredibly appropriate to criticize him, and I know I've dedicated plenty of time over the past 10 plus years to doing just that, because again, merited, earned, deserved. And you look at somebody that's been in charge for so long, I've talked about that we're not talking about the Vince McMahon of old now, we're just talking about old Vince McMahon. Very Al Davis-like, if you're familiar with football and you're familiar with the Raiders, you'll get the gist of what I'm talking about. Did all these great and wonderful things, but hung around too long and took his organization down in flames with him. But there is a cautionary tale here in that it can be very easy to criticize the devil you know, but the only thing that could be worse is the devil that you don't. And I know some of you are probably looking at the title of this video and you're saying, you're going to criticize Triple H? Where is that in the three books of Hunter, Hearst, and Helmsley? You're criticizing God? Yes, Heaver! I know. But you know, see, God, the whole connotation is about a whole bunch of different things. Some of it is about the majesty and the splendor and the magnificence of the ego of the man, Paul Levesque. You know, breakfast club rules, bitches, that, that type of stuff. But ego respects ego. Huge ego. You goddamn good and well know he got a huge ego. I mean, he even married into the boss's family. That's how big Triple H's damn ego is. But I hope that everybody clearly understands now, based off of recent years of evidence, that as much as you've been hankering and itching for Vince McMahon to step aside, for Vince McMahon to get the hell out of the way, for him to pass it over to the kids, pass it over to Stephanie, and in particular from the day-to-day -day wrestling creative piece, pass it over to Triple H. I hope you realize just how bad of an idea that is. Be careful what you wish for. You just might get it. And I can say this unequivocally beyond a shadow of a doubt. We have enough of a sample size of several years of work on a smaller scale to point to just how ill-equipped and poorly prepared and poorly suited Triple H would be for the overall role of overseeing the main roster products of Raw and SmackDown. Now, I know that comes as sacrilegious type of talk to some of you. Blasphemy for many others. Because you're going to point to NXT. I really liked NXT. NXT from like 2014 to 2018 was great. It was fantastic. And all this other dumb crap. It's an important reminder that especially if you go and you talk quite a bit about wrestling via the internet, via social media, even via YouTube videos. You're more a part of the hardcore audience that's going to be there regardless. And sometimes the more wrestling appeals to you, the worse it gets. The more it appeals to you, the less likely it's going to be to capture a mainstream audience. Now, some of you are going to talk about, well, AEW, AEW. Look, AEW is not even getting all of the hardcore wrestling fans. I go back to that night in October of 2019 when you had NXT and AEW going up head to head. When Dynamite, you had your first episode, what was that, October 2nd, 2019? Combined viewership of the two shows is somewhere around like 2.3-ish million. AEW now is hovering around a million. That's a decent number. 
But let's not pretend that they're setting the world ablaze or they're setting the world on fire. They're doing well within their own scope of what they're doing, but they absolutely are not growing their audience and are not well positioned to do that in the future. Even if you think that CM Punk and Daniel Bryan coming into the fold would be a massive ratings win for them. If it is anything, it'll be a bump in the short term, but there's no guarantee that that's going to stick or that's going to last. But I say that to say, not to be like an AEW versus a WWE thing from an AEW bashing lens. It's more of a Triple H bashing lens because he absolutely deserves it. Here's how dumb dick he was in his approach when he ran NXT. He had a several year head start, head start on AEW. AEW wasn't even a thing. AEW didn't have pay-per-views. AEW didn't have television. AEW didn't have talent. AEW didn't exist. And this asshole had years to position his brand to do big things. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, AEW comes along in 2019. And they even, when you talk about WWE with NXT, with Triple H, you talk about the USA Network, they even, if you remember, had a head start. They started air in NXT outside of the WWE Network, putting it on USA in prime time every Wednesday night for a couple of weeks there. And even with that head start, even with that huge WWE machine and that platform behind him, even with all of that, he got his ass handed to him head to head by AEW. I don't give a shit what type of excuse or reason you want to give, that's trash. So excuse the ever loving F out of me if I don't have a lot of belief in a guy that couldn't even beat the new kids on the block in AEW when he was running head to head against him when he had the damn tank tower machine behind him. And you still have people that think he would do a great job in charge of WWE as a whole? You don't look at that and say, warning, warning, danger, danger, incompetent over his fucking head. Because he got too caught up in trying to do an indie fed to appease his taste in wrestling. He got too caught up in trying to appeal to the hardcore audience to sit there and stay within his lane of what it was supposed to be, a developmental territory that was actually designed to build main roster stars. And even when he tried to go head to head with a diving full bore into the hardcore fan base, he got his shit kicked in by freaking Tony Khan, Kenny Omega, the Young Bucks, Jericho, and damn Cody freaking Rhodes of all people. How the hell does that happen? You could point to a period of time where you said, hey, this whole NXT thing, you know, you had the guys coming up through the developmentals like the Roman Reigns's and the Big E's and the Seth Rollins and the Dean Ambrose's. And then you had the four horsewomen. You had Becky and Sasha and Bailey and overrated ass Charlotte. Nonetheless, you could see at a certain point in time, like NXT was filling the role. It was getting people ready for the main roster. It was building characters for them to use on the main roster. Like it all made sense. But somewhere along the way, he got too caught up in his own bullshit. He got too caught up in trying to be the raging match move mark that he fucking is. And NXT lost the plot. And you know, the reality is, you want to talk about going head to head. He got his shit kicked in by AEW. That's pathetic. I don't mean that as a disrespect to AEW. But WWE's the one with the name and brand recognition. Even NXT had vastly superior name and brand recognition. Their distribution platform ran circles around AEW. When you talk about the combination of the actual primetime television on cable every week on USA Network and the WWE Network, their distribution nationally, internationally, far exceeds anything that AEW had or even has to this point. And yet... He lost, and I could sit there and spin it and say, you know, well, Triple H lost with his freaking C-level talent compared to AEW's trying to throw the biggest and best of what they've got. But it's still, at the end of the day, he had the Titan Tower machine behind him. And he couldn't even beat AEW. The last few years, his responsibility has been to get talents ready, boys and gals, for the main roster to be main roster stars. And we could talk and bitch and moan and pass the buck on to Vince all the hell we want. Talk about, well, it's hard to know what the hell he wants. It's harder to do that. And all of that may be true, but at the end of the day, Triple H has worked with the man for over two and a half decades. He's married into the 
freaking family. If anybody should have some type of good sense or good idea of the ever-changing taste of a Vincent K. McMahon and how to appeal to them, it should be Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Triple H, Paul Levesque. No wonder they didn't loop him in, uh, reportedly, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. And you got to take that, I, I grant you, with a grain of salt because, you know, we're talking about uh, pretty clearly biased wrestling journalism, which is a problem as a whole when you talk about wrestling journalism right now. So many of them are in the fucking bed of AEW. It doesn't even make any damn sense. But it's believable that they didn't tell a Triple H and a Shawn Michaels, the two butt buddies from back in the day, that they were doing all this crap. I can't blame them. Why the hell would I tell the person who is in large part responsible for the shit show that it is that we're making all these changes? Why? He didn't earn that right. Screw him. When you look at the fact that NXT with the head start and everything else that it had and all the raging love that it got from the hardcore fan base and from the internet hardcores couldn't even crack a million viewers consistently. This is the a-hole that you think is better suited than Vince? To run Raw and SmackDown every week? What the hell are you smoking? I realize weed is legal in a lot of states, but I didn't think Crystal Mac wise. Just because he was booking for a time in a way that appealed to the hardcore fans does not mean that he is well suited to be in charge of a national, international mainstream wrestling product. Vince sucks in his current role in terms of from a creative philosophy. There's no question about that. None of us, I think, will dispute that. But I guarantee you this, if you think Hunter would do any better in that role, you're crazy! He sucks! You have several years of evidence to point to how bad it sucks. They had to move NXT off to a different night, which they finally mercifully did because they got tired of trying to undercut AEW and in the process only damn undercut themselves, even with the Titan Tower machine freaking backing them up. Even though he sat there and instead of becoming a developmental territory, he tried to bring in all the guys that y'all sit there and claim that you love so damn much. And guess what? It didn't work. And even when they moved to their own night, they still can't get a million damn viewers. They can't even convert a third of the SmackDown audience to watch them consistently. They can barely convert 50% of the Raw audience to watch them a night later on the same damn network. And you think this dude is the right one to take over from Vince? You're insane.